Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is a Blue Collar Wine Show where I, hopefully, help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I also encourage palate experimentation. What I mean by that is so many people, and you, maybe you get caught in a rut every once, so easy to buy when you're doing white, when we're doing white wines, these are white wines. So easy to buy Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc. Those are the top three uh, white wines. And it's really easy to just walk in the store. You know where that section is. Grab a Sauvignon Blanc, grab a Pinot Grigio, grab a Chardonnay. You know what you like. And then you go out the door and you take it home and drink it. Easy enough. There's so many other white wines out there that are so enjoyable. And, you know, I just think it's kind of fun to experiment. Maybe you do too. Probably you do because you're watching this program where I do a lot of experimenting. So I'm going to do, I'm going to call it a little series, three different episodes called the three V's. Uh, these are white wines that start with a V. And the first one I'm going to do is Vermentino. Now Vermentino is most popular in Italy. That's where they grow a lot of it. Sardinia especially, the island of, our, the island of our Sardinia. Uh, they also grow it up in the northern part of Italy. And there it is called Pagato. They also uh, grow it in Tuscany, where it's, or Piedmont, where it's called Favorita. And then in Provence, where it's called Role. R-O-L-L-E. So, yeah, you know, that's the way it goes with uh, some grapes. They just have all these different synonyms, names. So, But most of the time when you walk into a store and you go into the Italian section, you will find Vermentino di Sardinia. Uh, they actually have an appellation named after that grape in Sardinia. Uh, Vermentino is a, a really cool white grape, and if I can turn people onto that varietal, I get very excited. Why am I wearing sunglasses, you ask? Well, I think if you remember, I've been out of commission for a little while. I had eye surgery. They had to fix the eyelid that was drooping and do some other things to my eyes. So this is now just about, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, five days. After the surgery, I'm feeling better. Uh, there's still some swelling. I don't want you guys to have to look at my eyes right now. But, you know, in a couple more episodes, the sunglasses will be gone. But, you know, it's not really bad, but, yeah, it's still not looking as good as I would like it to look. Let's just say that. So we're going to do Vermentino. And it's a, gr it's a great, like I said, it has those different names which can be confusing. Uh, in Italy, the richest, uh, most... Uh, Opulent, if you want to use that word, Vermentinos come from Bulgari in the Marima area of Tuscany. But none of these come from Marima. I don't have a roll A here from uh, Provence. I'm just doing straight up Vermentino. But I do have one. I have two from Sardinia and one from, of all places, Puglia, uh, Salento, and Puglia. Let's get started right off the bat. This is the, now you're going to have to, I tried to look these, okay. This is the Fellini Vermentino from the IGT Salento in Puglia. And this rolls in at $12. Vermentino is really cool. It, it, what I like about Vermentino, it has a little bit of a saline component to it, which, uh, you know, if you like that sort of thing, that's cool. If you don't, then don't buy it. But it's nice to get, it, I get so excited turning people on to different grape varietals and they come back to the store and they go, wow Stan, that was so cool, I really like that Vermentino or whatever other V wine there is. Or a lot of people I've turned on to uh, Suave, uh, which is Gar Garganica. And a lot of people, uh, you know, Suave kind of got a bad name because there was mass production down in the valley of... of uh, Suavia and um, Suave, and so a lot of kind of insipid, kind of weak whites came out that were called Suave. Well, there's some really good Suave, especially the Classicos, and I've gotten a lot of people turned on to that. I don't want to get too sidetracked, but that gets me stoked when I get people drinking different wines. So we're going to look at Vermentino. This is, oh yeah, kind of a gold, pale straw gold color. You can see that? Pretty cool. Let's see what we get on the nose. Fellini, Vermentino. 12 bucks. Yeah, you can get that kind of almost like a saline minerality crushed rock with a little salt in there. 
Get some dried herbs going on. A little bit of a kind of peach component coming through. Maybe a little bit of lemon as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. Good acidity, fresh in the mouth. You can just see this. Muscles, clams, beauty with that. The minerality comes through. There's just a tiny hit of saline on the backside. You get that kind of, a lot of lemon on the palate. A little bit of peach underneath. Good balance. Vibrant. I love vibrant whites. Do you like vibrant whites? I do. I love that kind of dusty rock minerality that comes through as well. Good balance, fresh, clean, peaches, lemon, a little bit of herbal component coming through on the back side. Um, good acidity, fresh, solid acidity. Not cutting your tongue acidity, but just that nice, fresh, almost like stainless steel, if you can kind of wrap your mind around that one. There's no surprise. Now, in Puglia, where this comes from, it sits on a limestone shelf near the sea. So, yeah, you get that kind of nice limestone. Limestone and white wines, it's a beauty. When you get those combination, it really, really kicks up the wine. You get a lot of those flavors. I love that kind of flintiness, that sort of, a, not flinty, uh, that lemon peel sort of thing going on with that little peach underneath and that dusty rock minerality. Like I said, it's no doubt that Vermentino would go with uh, shellfish. And, and so we're getting to that time when you can get clams and oysters. What white are you going to have with it? Well, you might just fall back to Sauvignon Blanc or you might do a Pinot Gris. Whatever, you know, whatever strums your core, that's fine. But think Vermentino because it's solid, solid um, shellfish wine. It's also very good, as a, some people like to say, a PP wine, porch pounder. Yeah, that's a beauty. I'm going to go, oh yeah, I'm going to go BB plus on that. Good, solid Vermentino for 12 bucks. Now let's move on to the land of Vermentino. Vermentino D, so this is Olianus uh, Sardinia, um, Vermentino D Sardinia. And it rolls in at 18 bucks. It's 2020. These are all 2020s, by the way. I don't think I got that on the other one. My eyesight isn't perfect, so uh, bear with me. Great label, eighteen dollars. I always think in terms of you know how many people just easily blow eighteen dollars on a Chardonnay or, or a Sauvignon Blanc or anything like that, and it's so easy to do, and you don't think about them, and then you start getting into what you might call weird wines like Vermentino. Maybe you're not familiar with that one. Ah, do I want to blow that kind of money? Trust your wine steward, the guy you go to, or girl. Again, very gold. Golden color on this one. Um, kind of a hay gold. Yeah. Let's see what we get on the nose. They also have another, you get Vermentino di Sardinia, but they also have an area there called Vermentino di Galura, which is the upper scale Vermentino. Probably more expensive, but I love Vermentino di Sardinia. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a lot of peaches on the nose, big time. This, for lack of a better way to explain it, smells creamier than the other one. I don't get the saline on this one. But I definitely get peach. A little apricot. Yeah, peach and apricot on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Boy, that saline really hits on the mid palate on this one. Up front, nice again, fresh acidity. I like that, especially when you're having foods like shellfish. That fresh acidity is really solid. Peach component comes through. This one has, I didn't get the lemon on the nose, but there's definitely a lemon component that comes through on the back side. Definitely got a lemon peel, lemon zest thing on the back end. Up front, you get the peaches, the apricot, and then it turns and morphs into that kind of a... Uh, um, uh, lemon zest with just a kiss of 
dried herb on the back end. This has minerality, not as dusty as the first one. It's there, and then that saline just yeah, it's come sneaks through on the back end. It's hiding underneath, kind of, you know, like the underbelly of the wine. Nice finish on this, really fresh. That lemon zest and the peach kind of joins up a little bit later. So you get that peach, apricot, turns into uh, lemon zest, and then the peach kind of sneaks back and says, hey, here I am. Yeah, I could see barbecued oysters with this big time. I, I could just enjoy this like on a sunny day out on the front lawn. Uh, just a really solid wine. That minerality is there. Not as obvious as the first one, but it's there. The dried herbs really pop on the mid palate, especially if you kind of suck that oxygen through. And I, you notice how I do that, but I think it's beneficial for anybody drinking wine, just practice that. Just suck some of that air through there. It really churns up the flavors. You get way more on the wine than just <laughs> knocking it back. That's if you even care. If you don't want to do it, that's fine with me. But I, if you are interested in making those qualities come out in the wine, this baby has a long ass finish on it. I mean, it just keeps going. That's crazy. That lemon sass peachy thing right at the back side. I like this Fermentino. I'm going to go B plus, A minus on that one. Very good. Now we sell quite a bit of this one. It's the, uh, oh, come on, Paula. I think that's Fiori Vermentino di Sardinia. This rolls in at $18 as well. There you go. Oh man, that one's still hanging on. Let me just go straight up A minus. A minus A. Same. Sometimes when you grade a one, you go, I was being too generous or. Too stingy, depends on my mood, I guess. Again, that, that nice golden kind of hay gold color to it. You can see that. Really cool. Let's see what we get on the nose. Paloma. Or, yeah, Paula Fiora Fiori Vermentino from Vermentino di Sardinia. It, it is definitely the main white grape of Sardinia. Again, that creaminess on the nose and, and, and definitely a... There's a peach component, almost get a little cantaloupe. There's definitely an herb coming through. Maybe uh maybe thyme, maybe thyme, maybe possibly. A little banana coming through. I always hate to say banana. For whatever reason, and I leave it off my tasting notes a lot. I try to work a different angle. But for some reason, banana is like one of those terms that pe turns people off. And I don't know why we sell a ton of bananas. But again, a little banana, cantaloupe, peach. Maybe a little thyme. Almost a soapy quality on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Now... Wow, no wonder we sell a lot of this. I don't think it's been a long time since I've tried this one. Now you get that kind of banana, peach, uh, cantaloupe thing coming through. Really kind of richer on the palate than either of the other two. Did I say that correctly? And, and just a, a richness. But at the same time, you get the minerality, a little white pepper on the backside, which is interesting. The saline element is there. It's all there. Fresh acidity. Not as fresh as the other two, but still... Nicely balanced acidity with this one. A little orange coming through as well, right at the back of the mid into the finish. Now this one had a long lingering finish. This does as well. And you get that kind of saline kind of white pepper thing going on at the backside. Now, like I said, no wonder we sell a lot of this. If you're a Chardonnay drinker and you want to try a different white, I would go to this Paula. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Paula Vermentino. Hard to do this with sunglasses on. These are nice bright lights I got on in my studio, but yeah. A 
A lot going on with this wine. Nice layers, good complexity for a white wine. Nice and fresh, but all those elements of, like I said, banana, peach, orange, a bit of cantaloupe. Cantaloupe's not quite as predominant, but it's there. That thyme element comes through on the palate. That herbal component, which I really like. There's minerality there, but it's so integrated that you have to kind of think about it. What am I drinking here? This one just hits you with dusty rock in the face. Boom! This one has good minerality, more integrated, and this one is definitely integrated minerality with that nice saline component that gives it complexity. Yeah, this is my favorite of the three by far, even though the other one was 12 bucks. I'm going to go straight up A, hedging to A+. This is one of the better Vermentinos I've tried. I'm glad I tried it. Now I know why we sell so much of it at the store. So there you go, Vermentino. Now, my question to you. We did the first V. I've got two more Vs coming up. Can you, in the comments, tell me which V wines I'm going to review? Now, one of them, I've watched the popularity grow and grow from years ago when I could barely say the name of it. Now it's become quite popular. It takes a lot of space. I have a pretty good section of it in my department. And Vermentino only have a couple. I should have more, but I only have a couple. I do display Vermentino quite a bit on the floor, especially in the summertime, because I really think people should try it. And I've, be, I've developed some a fan base of Vermentino, and I love that. I love that. That means a lot to me. So I'm going to go straight up AA Plus on this one. I think it's a fantastic Vermentino. All three were great. And if you want to try something different, expand your palate horizons. Search out Vermentino in the Italian wine section. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. If you want to, please subscribe to my channel. I'm, I'm growing. I really like that. It just makes you feel good, right? It just makes you feel good when you get knowing that people actually like your content. And make a comment. What other two V Whites am I going to review over the next two episodes? I'd, I'm very curious to hear your answers. Okay? You keep watching. And I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.